As a psalm singer, I can trace so many moments when singing a particular psalm, either at home, in my own private devotions, or in worship, has just um, um, offered me a gentle rebuke, um, or, or simply showed to me how condemned I, I am or I was. So, um, you know, I, I had been, uh, at the time that the, that the Psalm 102 really affected me, I had been, I, I had committed my life to Christ, I was worshiping in a, the Syracuse Reformed Presbyterian Church, but I still was a holdout on the subject of abortion, and, and I was was really swayed by um, by the reality of um, child abuse. Um, I was also very persuaded by um, an experience in my own life where a beloved family member had um, given herself an abortion with the knitting needles that she then gave to me as a as a as a present later, um, and. And she did that because she was in an abusive relationship and she could not, she was, she was in a dead end street. And, and I, more than anything, um, had committed my life at that point to really wanting women to have options. You know, that was part of what fueled my own feminist world and life view as well. So, um, so there we were singing Psalm 102. And there's a line in Psalm 102 that a people yet unborn will bless and magnify the Lord. And I sang those, and all of a sudden, I understood that the reason that abortion was a sin was because it denied people the opportunity to bless and magnify God. And in fact, in some ways, that's why murder is a sin. I mean, we all sort of know murder is a sin. We, we don't want to be murdered and we don't want to be murderers, but, but ultimately the reason that it is a sin is because it attacks the image of God in another human being and it denies them the opportunity to sing praises to the Lord who made them. And after I sang those words, I was just not the same ever since.